Well, good evening, everybody, and bless that wonderful name of Jesus, and welcome to Tuesday Night Healing School. <laughs> hey, praise the Lord. Hey, come on in. Come on in. I pray that everybody had a wonderful day. And you know, here on uh, in Healing School, it's just what it is. It's a school, and we're talking about healing. We're going to continue our teaching on God's medicine. Uh, we finished the Old Testament. Now we're going into the New Testament. Now, before we get started, I want to make sure you hit that like button. Hit the like, share, subscribe. And I know all of you got family members and friends out there, co-workers. Somebody need to hear what the Word of God says about healing. Amen. And then before we get started tonight, one of our partners, y'all know uh, Graciela, uh, Sister Campbell, uh, they had a brother that passed away. So I want to make sure we pray for her and her family. And uh, so let's do that right now. So Father, right now in Jesus' name, we pray for God, Graciela, Lord God, Sister Campbell, Lord, and we pray for her family. Father, we pray peace, Lord. We pray for your peace. And we thank you for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray, Lord, we didn't, I didn't know her brother, Lord, but I pray that he knew you, Father. You said to live is for Christ, to die is a gain. And I pray, Father God, for all the family members, Lord God, we just pray that you'll bring righteous men and women of God around their path, the, 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 the feed the word of God to them, give them the promises of God. And Father, I pray for Sister Campbell, you just would comfort her, wrap her up, wrap her around her arm, your arms of love around her. Hallelujah. Let her know how much she's loved and appreciated. And Father, I just thank you for strengthening her. And I thank you, Lord God, you're going to help her to be stronger than ever before. And Father, we just give you all the praise, the glory and honor for it in Jesus name. Amen. All right, Graciela, I want you to know. From us, from here, from us to you, we love you, sister. We praying for you. Like I said, stay in touch with us, and uh, we'll stay in touch with you. Keep us updated on what's going on. Amen. So, church family, remember to pray for her. Uh, if you see us, uh, send a little message on the, uh, you know, on the thing. Let her know that you love her. We praying for. Hallelujah. And uh, we just do what we do. We help people through. I ain't because this too shall pass. Glory be to God. Well, look, let's uh, make sure you have your Bible. That's the key. I want you to have your Bibles. Make sure you have your Bible. Praise God. Make sure you have a pen, paper, something to take notes. The main thing is make sure you write down them scriptures. Now, I want to share this with you. Somebody asked me one time, but how do you know about what notes to take and all of that? You can't capture everything I say, I guarantee you, unless you real quick. You know, you got to type. Maybe you one of them court reporters and you can type that stuff up real quick. But this is how I take notes. I take the scriptures down when I'm listening to other preachers and stuff. I take the scriptures down. And then the spirit of the Lord, as they teach, and something might jump out at me. A spirit, the spirit of God might jump. I say, oh, man, I'm going to write that down. So I can go back because that's called the rhema, the rhema word of God. You know, that word, that's what we want. Not the logos. The logos is the written word of God. That's why we write down the scripture references. But then that rhema, God, the preacher could be talking about something, but the spirit of God could, could be speaking to you at that moment. It could be an idea. It could be an answer to something you've been asking about. So that's how I take notes. Then I go back over it and then I pray. I say, okay, Father, the Holy Spirit, illuminate to me what it was you was trying to tell me illuminated. See, from my spirit, man, illuminated. And the spirit of God begins to uh, illuminate that what he put in that, in our spirit. Okay, I've been doing some things on Facebook because some of you see the nuggets of truth and the Lord been really having me emphasize about us training our spirit, man. I give you a good example today, just today, how the Holy Spirit helped me. Little thing, maybe not important, but these, see, he cares about every little detail. Today, me and my wife, my wife was in a conference, a class uh, on Zoom. I was taking care of some stuff, getting ready. I go through my routine, getting ready. And I said, honey, I think I'm going to go down there. I'm not a yard person. I'm really not. But I got a little part of grass I got to cut. And then my leaves, I usually let them all fall and clean them up. But not the Lord, like, why you wait to do that? It makes it harder. So this, the day, the Lord said, go out there, do them leaves now. And I'm thinking, okay, but I got my degree. And I kept sensing in my spirit, the Lord said, go and cut the grass and do them leaves now. So I go out, cut the grass first. 
And then I go out back, get my little blower, start blowing the little leaves, pass them up. Now watch this, how good God is. As soon as I got done cleaning up, putting everything away, here comes the rain. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I was going to put it off till tomorrow. Now, I know it may not be important to some of you. Now, you say, why is this important? What does this got to do with healing? The Lord's going to talk to you. And through these scriptures, he'll give you certain instructions, certain things to do. We call it an intuition or we call it a, a, a conscious. But that's the spirit of God trying to show you what to do. I know to you, you might say, what's so important about that? Hey, it was real important to me because when it's wet, the rain comes down. That's the worst part to try to mess with leaves. So God is good. We have a pond in the back of our yard. The pond is shut off. So I had to, everything was dry. It was easy. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. Really. I know some of you is not important, but it's important to me. I'm just telling you how it works. Just a little example of how it worked. That was a major victory for me today. Glory be to God. So let's pray. Let's make our daily confession and let's get into the word. So Father, right now in Jesus name, I just say thank you. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being my Lord. Thank you for being my savior. Thank you for the greater one, the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of me. Hallelujah. I thank you, Holy Spirit, how you lead and direct us and guide us in all truth. You says in all our ways to acknowledge you and you will direct our path. So I thank you for that today, Father. I thank you for that every day. I thank you, Father, for the, the leading of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. I will be sensitive to him. Let his leading as we share and get into the word of God tonight. Lord, I already know know people are going to be healed. Hallelujah. People are going to get delivered and set free by the power of God in Jesus name. Because that anointing that's on the word of God is going to be released tonight. And you confirm your word with signs following. We preach and we teach on healing. People are going to grab it and the healing manifestation is going to be revealed in their body in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper and every tongue that come against us in judgment shall be condemned. So right now in Jesus' name, I bind every outer word, every corrupt communication, every false accusation, every plot, every plan, every strategy, every maneuver that the devil would try to bring against us to hinder us and stop the word of God and the promises of God from being coming to pass in our lives. For we declare and we decree right now in Jesus' name, not one of them things should be coming to pass in our lives. Not one of those things that have been said over us that's, not, that's contrary to the word of God should be manifested in our lives. But Father, we release when we declare and we decree, we release the blessings of God in our lives. We release the promises of God, the goodness of God, the love of God, mercy of God, healing of God, provision of God, the favor of God to become the past in each and every one of our lives in Jesus' name. And Father, we'll make sure we give you alone all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. And amen. Woo! This is going to be a good night. I'm telling you, it's going to be a good night. Hallelujah. Okay, get your Bibles and let's make this confession together. You guys ready? Here we go. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same in Jesus name. Amen. Woo. Well, glory be to God. Let me start this clock. There we go. Hallelujah. That's just a guideline to keep us on track to make sure we don't keep we keep you too long. Okay, we're going to start in the New Testament, uh, scriptures in the New Testament. Uh, these are just the tabs I have in my Bible. These are my daily healing scriptures, and I believe the Lord said to share that. So that's what we're doing. Now we're going over to the New Testament. 
And we'll read these scriptures in the King James and the Amplified Bible. So let's first go to Matthew, Matthew chapter 8, and let's look at verses 2 through 3. Matthew chapter 8, verses 2 through 3. Yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I believe the Spirit of the Lord just drops up in my spirit to share with. One, let me give you some instructions. The Word of God gives us instructions. Faith, the Bible says faith comes by hearing. Not having heard, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. One of the things the Lord had to teach me uh, in, in any area of my life, any area of my life, uh, like I'm believing God, I'm standing in the gap for certain healing to be manifested in my body. But this is what the Lord taught me. You don't just hear that word once, you keep hearing it. You keep hearing that word over and over on healing or whatever subject it is, but just hearing the word. Now, when I say hear the word, it's uh, good anointed preaching or teaching in the word of God. You don't just hear it once, you keep hearing it. And then what happens? The only example I can give for this so far is in finances. We, my wife and I, we kept hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing, and we still heard the word about finances. All of a sudden, I don't know how it works with God, but like a cup or something is filled. And then all of a sudden, that word of faith, that faith is, is, is flowing up, flowing up, and all of a sudden, it pours out. You, 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 you reach this point where, whoop, in your spirit, that thing just overflows, and then you walk right into it. That's how it is with healing. You keep hearing that word on healing and hearing, hearing it. Like first that seed is planted and then it's being watered. But this is the key. You must have an attitude and a reverence in receiving that word. Like after that seed is planted, being watered. You have to reverence that part and want it to be watered. And all of a sudden it, 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 it grows up. I don't know how. Remember over there, Mark, the Bible says, uh, you, you sleep, you rise up night and day, first the blade, then the ear, then the four, four blade. You don't know how, you don't know how, but that's how it works in every area of your life, every area of your life, but you got to keep sticking with it. Keep sticking with it. Now we believe in miracles. We believe in the gifts of the spirit. I believe in miracles. I believe in God supernaturally healing people. This is just, the Bible says the gifts of healing. They're different gifts, gifts of healings. This is just a way we do it. This is the way God has anointed me is teaching people. I just, I just happen to be a teacher of the word and healing is manifest. Now, am I against the supernatural? No, we believe for the supernatural, but this is the way God, see, just another administration of the gifts, gifts of healings. I mean, there's all different types of ministration. This is just the avenue, the lane I drive in to see healing happen. And boy, when them results happen, have I seen miracles? Yes, I have. Have I seen instant miracles? Yes, I have. But the basics of what God had me do is teaching. Where do I get that from? I told you, we be like Jesus' ministry. You go all through, you'll see in the New Testament, Jesus taught and then they got healed. He taught and they got healed. Nothing different. The pattern is still the same. If you teach people, your faith will never rise above the level of your confession or the level of what you've been taught. If you don't know about healing, you won't expect it. So God has me do healing school every week. What? To raise up your expectation. What? Continue to water that seed that's been planted. But it's up to you to grab holes of it and believe it. I can't do that part for you. You have to do that. Amen. Okay. So let's look at uh, Matthew's chapter eight and verses two uh, through three. You guys ready? It says this, and behold, there came a leper and worship him saying, Lord, if thy will, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will be thy clean. And immediately his leprosy was clean. I'm telling you, I was ready to just jump right in there and teach that, but I, I sensed to see the Spirit of the Lord. No, read the other one first, then get into the teaching. So thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, so look, look over here, Matthew. This is the Amplified 
uh, classic, Amplified Classic, Matthews 8. Thank you, Jesus. And, and look at verses 2 and 3. It says, And behold, a leper came up to him, and prostrating himself, worship him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you are able to cleanse me by carrying me. And he reached out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. Be cleansed by being cured. And instantly his leprosy was cured and cleansed. Now let's let's take our time on this. Let's break this down. Because this is where so many Christian people are or people in the world. They don't know if it's God's will for them to be healed. This guy came to Jesus. And let's, let's just talk today like we live in today. Because sometimes we read this Bible and we read it like it's not for us today. That's why the Spirit of the Lord tells me to teach it and in, in to really work on teach it in, in simplicity so people can grab it. See, the Bible, you can read the Bible, but if you don't know how to use it, I think about the guy when Philip came to the, to the uh, guy in the carriage. And he was he was and he was reading and Philip said, You understand what you read of? He said, No, I don't have nobody to teach me. And Philip started reading to him. He said, What stopped you from being baptized now? And he got stopped the carriage, got baptized, and, and came into the kingdom. That's how many people go to church. Now look, this platform we never put down pastors, never put down other leaders. Man, I learned that from my, one of my fathers in the faith, Kenneth Copeland. Out of all the years, I tell you, I don't care how much, how you, what you feel about Kenneth Copeland, what you say, what you uh, say about Kenneth Copeland. One thing I love about Kenneth Copeland, he has never used his platform out of all the years I've seen him. And even some of his old, looking at some of his old stuff or listening to some of his old teaching, never used his platform to ever criticize or put down other leaders. Now, people criticize and put him down, but he never done it. That's what I love about him. Man, he, he see, so when I look at Kenneth Copeland, yeah, he teaches on faith and healing and all that, but you know what he represents? He's a man of love. He's a man of love. I watch him. And, and why am I saying that to you? Be careful what you say about other people. Church, you don't want to get in that camp where you criticize it and putting down other people. You heard me say, you know, a lot of churches, what I, I know this for a fact, that what we teaching, we are the minority compared to other churches. I've been to other churches. I listen to other pastors. I listen to other preachers. They all, not all, but many of them tell you, God wants you sick. Oh, God put this sickness on you to teach you something. See, I don't call names, but y'all know I'm telling you the truth. Many people believe that way. But it's not Bible. It's not Bible. And this is one of the things, like this man with the leper, he didn't know if it was God's will. He comes up into Jesus and what many people, Lord, if it's your will, will you heal me? Now, Jesus answered that for him. He says, I will. Now, what is that telling you and I? If Jesus said it for him, it's the same for us. You say, well, where do you get that? Because God has no respect to person. Now, I'm going to say this. I know y'all laugh at me. We know God has no respect to person. I tell people, you know, Jesus loves everybody, but I'm his favorite. Don't get offended. You can say the same. That's just how I, what I think about my father. The way he treats me, what he does for me. Man, the things that God does for me, I have to. I, to me, I think like, I must be your favorite. That's how I feel. But I know God has no respect to person. If God says something in this word, this is what he would do. And this scripture here is so important because Jesus is trying to show us the heart of the father. He said, if you've seen me, I remember he said to his disciples later before he left to go on the cross and die. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. Now, one of them said, well, show us Jesus. Will you show us? He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. And they still going to ask, well, show us the father. He just, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. What would he say? Jesus said, I was down here to represent the will of the fathers to you. So this man comes up and say, say, Jesus, if you will, you can help me. Jesus says, I will. Some of you have that same question tonight. You're not for sure if it's God's will to heal you. You might be thinking because of your circumstance, your situation is too big. All of it is small to God. I don't care what sickness, what disease. I don't care if you need a new hip, a new knee, a new kidney, a new heart. It's all 
all easy to God. But the question comes to, do you believe it's his will for you to be healed? Because until you settle that, the devil's going to keep throwing all kinds of different things to you. He's going to tell you why it's not for you. See, that's one of the first things you got to settle. That's why we stick with the Bible. How do you know the will of God? By the word of God. And what is the word of God? It's the will of God. You know, we, 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 we watching things go on in our world right now. And a lot of people getting in fear. They get in trouble. But Jesus already told us about this stuff. And this, why, why, is it so, why is it so many people get rattled? I, I really believe because we walk away from the word of God. It's amazing how many people go to church every week and you ask them, do you read your Bible daily? And, and, and probably when I ask that question, I'm back in the prisons now. I get to go back into the praise of the Lord, get to minister in the prison and talking to some of them in there. And, 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 and I know it's true, even, even in, uh, in the prisons or out here, probably 90% of Christian people don't read their Bible. I know, I know that sounds funny. You think, no way. Oh, well, ask yourself, do you do it? How often do you read your Bible? Really? I'm talking about every day. How often do you read your Bible? And now you'll see that what I'm telling you is for real. We get carried away. We do other things. And the most important thing we live by is the word of God. So if you're not taking time to read the word of God, how are you going to know what God's will is? You'll, be, you'll guess the rest of your life. And then when God don't heal, if God don't, if you don't get healed, we say stuff like this. It must not have been God's will. No, it is God's will. It is God's will. How do we know? Because the word, your experiences and my experiences do not define the will of God. So you, we have to settle it. God is always right. Now, some, I may experience something because I was ignorant or I just didn't know what God's will or how to apply the will of God to my life. But it's always God's will for you and I to be healed. You, you're going to have to settle that. You're going to have to settle that. And then you're going to have to become a student of the word of God. What do I mean by that? If you want this healing in your life, or you want whatever God wants to be manifested, you're going to have to become a student where you're so endowed or so wrapped up with the word of God that nothing else can sway you. It can sway you. You know, we, we taught a lesson on the, the, the parable of the sow, the sower sows the word about seed time. And uh, we, we taught us lesson on uh, the uh, Lord help me. I can't remember the title of it, but, but the word of God, how the sower sows the word and, and, and all fields, the good ground, the, the, on the, 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 the seed by the wayside, the, uh, the seed on stony ground. Okay. The seed by the thorns and the seed on good ground. It was all only one thing that the enemy uh, ever was after. This, this is, if you remember this, it's a simple truth. It's only one thing your enemy and my enemy is always after. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. Right now, there's enough power in the seed. See, the incorruptible, indestructible, everlasting, ever living seed of the word. There's enough power in that word to heal you and your family for the rest of your life. <laughs> this is the question. Do you believe? Do you believe that this word is powerful enough to drive out every sickness that ever touched your body? Because this word is going to do everything it was created to do. And all you got to do is find the seed of the word of God about healing. About healing. But what do we have to do? We have to renew our mind to the word of God. And let me tell you, you guys heard me say this before and I say it again. There's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of distraction and there's a lot of deception going on. Why? It's only one reason to keep you away from the promises of God, to keep you away from the very thing you expect from God. Many of us, all we lack is the, is the wisdom. God, what is your wisdom? What, what is your wisdom about this circumstance or this situation? And we think like, like, like turning on the switch of the electricity, the lights here. We think, God, I just come in, plop down, 
give God a, a, a minute of the day or a couple, couple seconds of the week, and we think God is going to unload that wisdom. Oh, no, 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 no. This, this, this is the most, the Bible says his word is more precious than rubies and gold. <laughs> and you think God just going to turn that loose on anybody? No, you, you, you wouldn't just give your four, four, four year old son, your brand new uh, Mercedes Benz and tell him to go drive it. So why do you think God going to turn loose his most valuable possession? What is that? His word, the word that he spoke to you and I. He wants you and I to know it, but he wants you to treasure it. He wants you to treasure it. He wants you to honor it. So this man comes to Jesus. He says, and, and it says, and behold, there came a leper, a leper. And worshiping him, the, uh, and the Amplified said he, he prostrated himself. I mean, he laid flat out and worshiped the Lord. And then it says, he said, if thy will, see, if thy will, I know people asking that question. Probably billions of people today prayed that prayer. Lord, if it's your will, will you heal me? Oh, Lord, if it's your will, will you heal my son or my grandmother? And, and see, they, they, why? Because they don't know the will of God. We got pastors, we got leaders, we got preachers that are pray. Lord, if it's your will, heal so and so. You know why people pray that prayer? Because they don't know the will of God. And let me say this, they don't have no confidence in that prayer. All right, I, you said pr prove that. Okay, I'm going to prove it to you. Go, go over here to uh, first, go over here to first John. See, when people pray that prayer, they don't have no confidence. They, they hoping, they hoping this one prayer, God will answer. Why? Watch, watch. Okay, look, look over to First John. This, I don't, I didn't give this to the notes, but the Spirit of the Lord is leaving us there. First John. Look at verse chapter five. That might be in there. That's later on down that we're gonna get to it. Uh, uh, and First John five, and and look at verses fourteen and fifteen. Okay, we. I just want to show you the will of God. Now, watch. This is gonna give you a whole lot of confidence tonight. It says, and this is the confidence. And this is the confidence. What I say, the confidence. See, some people think it's arrogance, it's cocky. See, a, a one thing many Christians, many Christian people have a problem with or is confidence. So when, when you run into a believer like myself or other people that have confidence, you look at it as arrogance and cocky. And what it really do, it shows your insecurity in the gospel or in Jesus. See, don't let my confidence uh, boost or unfold your insecurity. Because the Bible says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. In who? In God. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. What is the confidence? If I ask something according to his will, I know he hears me. Okay, did y'all see this? Lord, is your, Lord, if it's your will, will you heal me? I don't have to pray that prayer because I know it's his will. So the confidence is when we pray for somebody sick, we say, in the name of Jesus, I command you to be healed. Why? Because we know we, we, we have confidence. Because the word says, heal the sick. Okay, do you, I don't want to, do you guys see this? If I know the will of God, I have confidence. Because the Bible says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. How do we know the will of God? By the word of God. And then it says this, and if we know. See, confidence. If we know that he heard us, see, if you know that God hears you what you're praying for, it says this, whatsoever we ask, we know. Not hoping, not guessing, we know that we have. If I know it's God's will for me to be healed and I come to the Father and say, Father, I, I'm praying for a new hip. I'm praying for a new knee or, or, or for, for cancer to be gone. I know I have that because I know it's God's will for me to be healed. And it says, 
I know that we have the petition that we desire of him. So I don't have to go back and beg God for him. All I got to do now is thank him. Thank you for answering my prayer. Thank you for, you say, I lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. See, that's the confidence. That's why we do healing school. We do healing school to build up your confidence in the word of God. And why do we do that, Pastor? Why are you doing this? Because I want everybody to be healed. Why? Because I know it's God's will for you to be healed. Do you know God already did everything he's going to do about your salvation? Watch this. About your healing and about your finances. You say, what? Well, Lord, I'm like, I'm in some trouble. No, you just don't know enough how to receive or to take what's yours. See, once you know it, grace is everything that God has already provided. Faith takes what's already been provided. See, you have confidence in salvation because that's what you've been preached to most of your life. See, you have no confidence that Jesus wants to save everybody. But if I ask you, will everybody be saved? Or will everybody receive it? You'll say no. And you say, why? Because everybody won't receive it. It's the same with healing. Jesus already died on the cross. He already took whippings on his back, thorns on his head for you to have a peace of mind. See, whipped on your back so you can be healed. But the only reason you don't have confidence, remember what we said? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Think about it if you was a little child all your life hearing that it was God's will for you to be healed. It was God's will for every sickness, every sickness and disease to be healed. No matter what it was, God wants to heal you. You be walking around having no doubt that it's God's will for you to be healed. But the only reason you don't, you and I don't, or other people don't, because that's not what we heard all our life. So now, like me, I'm in my 60s. Some of you guys in your 30s, 40s, you heard that it was God's will putting sickness on you. God was doing this to teach you something. So what's, what's what you doing? Man, you got to uproot all that crazy stuff. And now you got to get into what the word says. And now your faith grows. You begin to believe. Whoa, I believe this, Lord. I believe. Now you're still going to have tests. What? What? Now what's the test coming? The devil's going to come and try to what? Take that word from you. He wants you to release it. Then he wants you to say stuff. Well, it won't. It must not work for me. So I don't believe that preach. It must not have been God's will. No, no, no. That's the wrong thing to do. You keep standing. After you've done all the stand, you keep standing. How long do I stand? Until the manifestation come. See, this is why I say, if you're willing to stand, if you're willing to stand for eternity, it won't take long. <laughs> Because even if you live to be 120, what does that compare to eternity? That's all a short amount of time. So if you're willing to stand through eternity, it won't take long. Don't compare yourself to other people. Don't, don't be questioning God. Why is it taking so long? No, you believe. I believe I'm healed now, Lord. I believe I'm healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Whatever needs to be repaired or whatever needs to be replaced is happening right now. That word is going down in my spirit. It's growing up. I don't know what the word of God in that situation has got to do, but you do. Now, if you need some help, go to the doctors and get some help or get back on the word. Don't push past what you can't believe or keep believing away. Ain't no God ain't mad at doctors. They doing the same thing, trying to get you healed just like God is. But use your faith working together. We're not condemning you, not mad at. Just go and get the help and get healed and get back up and keep believing God that you healed. How many of you understand this? But you got to decide that it's God's will for you to be healed. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what the report is. I don't care what they say. I say the word of God said, let God be true and let every man be alive. Now, what did the Lord say to that leper? He said, I will. I will. And look, and look what it says. Let, let's go back. Let's go back to Matthew. I like this in the King James. Matthew, look, look what he said in Matthew 8. Woo, thank you, Jesus. I'm glad I came to heal this school. See, we're going to take our time. I'm hoping you understanding this. We're not in a rush. But we're going to, this is God's medicine. Look, look at this. He said, and Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, and look what Jesus said, I will. Can you hear Jesus saying that to you today? Lord, he said, will you heal me of this uh, cancer? Or Lord, will you heal me of these migraines? Now, can you hear Jesus say, I will? Well, ain't you going to pray? He, he didn't say, let me pray and ask the Father. He already knew the will of the Father. He didn't say, oh, I don't know if I can pray for that. I believe the Father. 
the father is doing this to teach you something. You cannot find one incident. You can't find one example in the Bible where somebody came to Jesus that was sick. I don't care how bad the disease was. Leprosy was one of the worst things in this time. You can never find Jesus saying, oh, uh, I'm going to just pray uh, the father, the father put this on you to teach a lesson. You can't find one example. You can't find one example where Jesus ever said, let me pray, father, if it's your will to heal them. You cannot find one example in the Bible, in the Bible. Now, you might hear that in some kind of religious circle. See, religion will keep you a beggar. Religion will keep you begging. Religion will have you never take possession of what belongs to you. Now, they'll teach you, boy, they'll fight you when it comes to our salvation. And then they'll fight people like me and other people who telling people God wants them healed. For what? For what? It's the Bible. See, and you get mad at us. You call us all kinds of names. Oh, be careful. That's a call. God, God don't want everybody healed. But they can't show you scripture on that. All they can give you is experiences. Oh, I knew Sister So So. She was a good saint and, 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 and she didn't get healed. But we don't know what sister so-and-so was believing. You don't know. Only God knows what's in the heart of man. We don't know what people was believing. Don't ever look. Remember, where's my notes? Remember I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to get my notes here. Remember I said this last week. Look, this is, these are the things you got to remember in my notes. Don't talk about or meditate on what you don't know. You don't know what people are believing. I don't care how good of a Christian they look. You, they might have unforgiveness in their heart. You don't know. Just because they go to church every Sunday and look like they're a good Christian, they might be some of the worst gossipers or talking about other people, putting people down. You don't know. So don't pretend like you do. But people make doctrines out of But we do know what the word says. We know what the Bible says. That's all you go by. And then I said this. Don't talk about and meditate on what you don't have. Don't be going, oh, Lord, if I had. Don't, don't waste your time on that. Don't be wasting your time on that. And then the third one was on don't, don't talk about or meditate on what you, what you can't do. Why waste your time on that kind of stuff? Get in the word and see what God says. Meditate on the word of God. So Jesus, we know right here, Jesus says, I will be thy clean. So you got to ask, when you ask God, is it your will? Well, hey, that's why you come to healing school to find out what the God says about healing. See, it's school. You learn. You come here to learn. And I'm here to tell you, it's God's will for you to be healed. I don't listen to what critics say. I don't care about what other people say. If they say something to me, I say, well, I got the Bible. What you standing on? I'm standing on the word. Why you tell people that? Because God said it. God said it. It's his will for you to be healed. Okay, here go another scripture. Let's go over to Matthew. Let's stay right over there. Let's, let's go over here. Let me get my notes so I don't give y'all the wrong scriptures. I keep my notes too. Go to Matthew's uh, 8. Look at verse 16 and 17. Matthew 8, 16 and 17. And we're going to go back to the Old Testament here to show you where God fulfilled this, this scripture. So I just want you to see what scripture was this that being fulfilled. Matthew chapter 8 and look at verse 16 and 17. It says, when the even was come, when, uh, when, when, when the eve was come, they brought unto him many, how much? Many, many, many that were possessed with devils. See, some of you don't believe people are possessed with devils, but the Bible says here, Jesus, he believed it in his day. I don't know when it stopped. He said, they brought many unto him, brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed just a few lucky folks. Just the best, just the ones who attended church most often. Just the ones who look more religious. No, it says, and healed all that were sick. How many did he heal? All that were sick. How many did he heal? All that were sick. That's Jesus, man. He healed all that were sick. And look what it says why he did it. Now, let, let's find out why he healed all that were sick. That it might be fulfilled. Uh-oh. Why did he do this? That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken 
by Isaiah, or is Elijah, by Isaiah, the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now, hold your place right there. Let's go turn over to Isaiah 53. Let's see what it is that he did. I'm going to come back. Just keep your finger there. But let's go back to Isaiah 53. This is what he's fulfilling. Isaiah 53. And look at verses uh, four and five. Isaiah 53, four and five. It says, surely he has bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Okay, that word grief was sickness. In the Hebrew, that word grief was sicknesses. Surely he had borne our sicknesses and carried our sorrows. Okay, and it says, uh, yet he we did esteem him stricken, extreme esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions; he was bruised. For our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. We'll get down later where it says we were. That means it's past. This one saying present tense, we are. And then we're going to get down where later on in 1 Peter where it says we were. That means that's past. It's already done. God's, what he's trying to do, don't keep concentrating on it. It's already a done deal. Now look back here at Matthew's... Uh, 8 and 17, verse 17 says, that it might be fulfilled. What? What I just read. Jesus said that it might be. Why did he heal all these folks? To show you that it was fulfilled what Elijah the prophet said, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself, okay, took our infirmity and bear our sicknesses. Y'all see this? And just that oh, we read this old covenant and new covenant, and we try to separate it. Jesus did this to fulfill that old covenant to let you know it's done. Now let's look at it in the Amplified Classic. Look at verse sixteen and seventeen in the Amplified Classic. It says, "When evening came, they brought to him many, many, many who were under the power of demons." What were they under? See, I'm not saying all sicknesses, but many sicknesses are caused by demonic influence or demonic power. But they brought many. They brought to him many who were under the power of demons. Okay? And he drove out the spirits with a word. See, Jesus ain't never tell us to pray. He said, cast them out. How are you going to cast them out? With the word of God. Not in your name, not in my name, in Jesus' name. Cast that thing out in Jesus' name. It could be sickness, it could be disease, it could be a tumor. See, he told us to speak to the mountain. We'll get to all them scriptures, but see, Jesus told us to do it. You do it. He drove out the spirits with a word and restored to health. Watch this. He restored. I mean, see, it was gone. He restored to health all who were sick. Now, if God didn't mean this, that that was for all, he shouldn't have put it in the Bible, but he did. Why? He wanted us to know that God's desire is the same today. He wants to heal them all, the Bible says. See, God wants you well. He wants me well. He wants everybody healed. Why? Because he loves us. He's a father. I don't know a father on the face of the earth that want their kids to have, have cancer or want them to be sick. If they are, boy, that, that, that's a crazy father. Really, ain't no loving father wants his child to suffer with, I don't care. I know with me, I don't want my kids to suffer, not even a cold, any kind of fever. And my grand, I don't want no illness, no sickness, no disease, none. Not having it in Jesus' name. Not have. If I had my way, none. 
Why? Because I love them. I care for them. I want them to have life and have it more abundantly. I want them dealing with sickness and disease, joints, pain, and all of that stuff. I want them to be healed all the days of their life. Now, if I'm a natural father or grandfather, how much more you think my heavenly father cares about you? See, now the re this is another reason why many people struggle with healing. I'm going to tell you right here. Get, 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 get your pens and papers out. Okay, right now, write this down. One of the biggest reasons people struggle with healing is this. They haven't accepted the love of God for them. You say, I know God loved me. Oh, do you? Have you accepted the love? Oh, glory be to God. The love of your father. How much he loves you. That's what many people struggle with. They think they got to do something right or do this. Well, I did this. So now you're thinking God punished. See, you haven't accepted that love yet. You haven't accepted yet. No matter how much stuff my kids did in the past, there ain't nothing if I have in my power that I wouldn't do for them that makes life good for them. Because I love them. Because I love them. I love my children. I'm telling you, there ain't nothing. And now, grandkids, some of you got grandkids. You know what I'm talking about now. My kids, we tease my kids every now and then. We say, oh, okay, when's the kid's birthday? All right, we're going to fly over. We're going to come over. And they, and, and especially my son, he said, yeah, I know, Dad. I know. Y'all really coming to see the kids? We coming to see y'all too, but we really coming to see them grandbabies. You know what I'm talking about? Come on. Any of y'all know? Come, don't look at me like that. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Anybody that's grandparents, you know. Now, the kids you love, but boy, them grandkids. And I don't know, one day I pray, if, if Jesus tarry, the Lord live long enough, I look, boy, I don't know what me and mama are going to do. I don't know what me and baby love going to do. If we get great grandkids, watch out. Now the grandkids are going to go, what? <laughs> now there's great grandkids. Woo. See, I don't know. I just know where I'm at right now. And I tell you, I love my children, but them grandbabies, Woo, that's a whole different arena. See, God took me to a new place, a new, man, you, you thought you loved, boy, you love a whole lot different. I'm, t I'm just telling, I'm just telling you my experience, I'm telling you, but why, what am I trying to get you to see? I know how I love my children, woo, and then when I read this, this is the greatest love letter a man would ever have. And when you see what God says. You see what God says. The Lord had me uh, lately. I, I go back to Genesis a lot. And the Lord just had me. This thing just getting so deep in my spirit. Where the Lord said when Cain and Abel. When Cain was mad and his countenance fell. And the Lord said. And see the Lord is helping me. But I begin to see this scripture in every area of life. The principle of it. You say what is it? What did I tell you? Over there in Genesis chapter 4. And the Lord said to Cain. He says. If you do what's right. Oh, if you do what's well, if that word was in the Hebrew was right. He said, wouldn't it be well with you? See, wouldn't it? See, if we just could get that in us, church, if we just, if you just do what's right, wouldn't it be well with you? But then God said this. He said, I'll tell you what the problem is. He says, sin lies at the door. Always remember when the devil tempts you and I to do anything that's not right or what we know is right according to the word of God. There's only one reason you do that, because sin lies at the door. Now, that's some of you business owners, that's even the way you treat your employees. See, husband and wife, that's even how you treat your husband and wife. Your children. See, come on. See, the Bible says, if you do what's right, wouldn't it be well with you? But the Bible, but then God says, I know your problem, Cain. Sin lies at the door. And it wants to rule you. But he said, you're supposed to rule over it. That's the biggest thing, church. See, you have confidence when you do what's right. You do. You do. You have confidence. And once you have that confidence in the word of God, you don't let anything manipulate you or anything to take. See, oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord. This stuff is coming to me so quick. See, you don't let anything manipulate or even control you. Okay? See, if you're not careful, certain people will try to uh, uh, manipulate you or call, c control you to do a certain thing a certain way. Why? Because they're trying to get you not to have the ability to think on your own or make decisions on your own. And if you ain't careful, they will even control you, manipulate you, hold things away from you that, that, that you know you deserve. Why? To try to hold something over you like the Lord it over you. But uh, you got to get strong enough where you like, 
Nobody can lord nothing over me. Nothing can persuade me but the word of God. And God needs you and I to get to that point when it comes to healing. Now, I don't care what you say. I know it's God's will for me to be healed. I don't care what my body. See, I was teaching the church Sunday. God told us what to do. Don't look at what's seen. See, he'll tell you what to do and what not to do. Don't look at what's seen. Why? Because everything you see today, I guarantee you, you just live a couple more days. It's temporary. It's going to be subject to change. It's all going to change. You just live a couple more days. In our lifetime, we have seen things change. Why? God said, you just, it's all temporary. But what am I going to look at? I'm going to look at the promise of God. I'm going to look at the healing of God. I'm going to look, it's God's will for me to be healed. I'm, that's what I'm going to look at. I'm going to believe that it's his will. See, I'm going to look at the promise of God. Why? Because all this other stuff, don't even let your body dictate to you. Whatever's going on, you just lift your hands up and rejoice. Say, Lord, I thank you. This is all temporary. It's subject to check. I believe by your stripes I'm healed. I believe Jesus. See, this scripture was fulfilled. This, this was fulfilled. He healed them all. So that means he heals me too. I know, Lord, I'm not going to be left out in the crowd. You're going to heal me too. I received that healing. I'm going to hold on to it. I'm not going to let it go. I'm not moved by what I see. How long do you do it? It does as long as it takes. No, I, I receive that healing, Lord. I believe I'm healed. I believe I'm cancer free. I believe I can see well. I believe my hips are healed. I believe my knee is healed. I believe I have no more tumor. I mean, no tumor, no, no migraine. See, I arthritis, you can't live in my body. That's temporary. That's subject to change. You got to go in Jesus' name. See, you just have to hold on to the promise of God. Don't let it go. Don't. Did you hear what I said? Say, don't let it go. Come on, say it with me. Say, don't let it go. Don't let it go. See, you have to call yourself. See, this is what the Bible said. God calls those things that be not as though they were. See, when it was darkness on the earth, God didn't stand up and say, "Woo! it sure is dark. No, he said, light be. He called what he wanted. If your body's aching with pain, you say, "Woo! I'm pain free. I say I'm pain free. People say I'm lying. No, you're not. No, you're not. You calling those things that be not as though they were. I'm pain free. I'm healed. I'm full with the wisdom of God. I'm letting God it by the spirit of God. I heard the word of God. I heard the spirit of God. I, I'm directed by the spirit of God. This is what I heard many people say. I can never hear the word of God. I can never hear God. I can't hear the voice of God. I, can, I, I don't know why I can't hear God. Well, if you keep saying it, that's what you keep calling. And guess what? The devil going to make sure you don't hear him. You got to come to him. Do you all see this? I'm not trying to come up with no, This is the Bible way of doing things. See, the devil wants us to keep living in this arena. But God wants us to see. Jesus said, I came to teach you the kingdom. Why did God tell you and I, seek ye first? Watch this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What? Learn the kingdom. Learn how the kingdom operate. The kingdom of God works like this. You believe, then you receive. You have to believe first, then you receive. Oh, and I heard somebody out there will prove it. I'm talking about healing. Watch this. Oh, man. I, I don't know if I gave you the scripture, Glenn. Lord Jesus, you got me moving around here. Okay, go, go over to Romans chapter 10. Look at this in Romans 10. I don't think I gave this scripture to you. Oh, glory be to God. This is so much fun. I think I have more fun than y'all in healing school. Look at Romans 10. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I got to go the right way. Look at Romans 10 and look at verses 8. 8, 9, and 10. <laughs> Glory, watch this. It says, But what saith it? The word is not thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, okay, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be Now I want to ask, thou shalt be saved. I want to say this to you. This is the answer to the question before. God, I'm going to tell you again. He'll go to answer to the question I'm going to ask. I'm going to tell you one more time. Before. Before. Now, before you were saved, okay, watch this. What do you have to do first? You have to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that God raised him from the dead. 
And then what happened? Now, did the salvation come before you did that or after you did that? What's the answer? Before. <laughs> See, you had to do something first and then you had it. What? I'm going to show you again just in case you missed it. In case you missed it. See, you have to say you heal before you heal. That's the way the kingdom works. You have to say you heal. You have to say you're blessed. You have to say all your needs are met before all your needs are met. And look, I'm telling you, if you get this, man, it's going to set so many of you free tonight. Watch this. But, but what saith it? Okay, what saith it? The word is naughty, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we... Okay, thank you, Lord. I, I believe the Lord said, back it up some more. Okay, I'm going to back up some more. Okay. Let's go down to verse uh, six. Let's go up to verse six. Okay. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's, let's go up to verse six. It says this, but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. See, watch this. Watch. If you get this, church, I'm telling you, I know we're going a different way, but God is going to help set some of you free tonight right here. But the righteousness which is of faith, which is of faith, speaketh on this wise. Say not, okay, underline that, circle it, put a star by it. God is telling you what not to say. Hey, I'm going to show you, watch this. If you get this, we're going to say not. God is telling you and I what not to do. Say not in your heart, in thine heart. He telling you what not to do. Now, come on, church, I'm telling you. Say not in your heart, who shall ascend into the heaven? Jesus said, don't say that. Don't say, who shall ascend into the heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Why is he telling you to do that? Because Jesus already came down. Oh, Jesus, come and do this. For no, no, no. He said, don't say that. Don't say Jesus, come. Look, he said, don't do that. Read it. I didn't write it. God, I'm, I'm not smart enough to write nothing like this. I'm just learning law. This is a law of the kingdom. See, there's laws. When you discover laws, they work the same all the time. Read that again. It says, but the righteousness of God, which is of faith, speaketh on this wise. This is he, I mean, Romans 10, 6 through, 6 through 9, we're going to go. Watch this. But the righteousness, which is of faith, speaketh on this wise. Say not. Circle that. Underline it. Put a star. Do something. He's telling you what not to do. Then he's going to tell us what to do. God always tells us what to do and what not to do. You, you begin to learn this pattern in the Bible. All of a sudden, the Lord begin to reveal this to me. This is a pattern throughout the Bible. He's going to tell you what to do and what to do or what not to do and what to do or what to do and what not to do. All through the scriptures, you're going to see that pattern. And the Lord, see, the Lord just begin to give me that revelation. Now watch what he says. Say not. See, you see this? Say not in your heart. Who shall ascend into the heaven? What is, I mean, that is to bring Christ down from above. He said, don't do that. Jesus, come down and touch me. He said, don't do that. Don't do that. Why would God tell you that? Because Jesus already came. He already done everything he's going to do for you and I. And then it says this, or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ again from the dead. See, when you're asking Jesus to come back and do something that he's already do, he's not going to do it again. God says, don't say that. Don't say, say not. Oh, Lord, if you just would do this. He said, he's already done. See, don't do that. Don't say that. Lord, come and touch. No, no, he already done it. Okay, now watch. But what saith it? Now, he told you what not to say. Now, he's going to tell us what to say. But what saith it? In other words, what, what, then what do I do? What say if it, the word is not thee. See, he's telling you, you ain't got to do that. The word is not thee. What, Lord? Oh, you got everything you need. The word is not you. Oh, if you get this. See, you ain't got to pray and ask God, God, come and heal me. No, 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 no. God said, don't say that. Don't say that. Why? The word is not you. Huh? Even in your mouth. Oh, glory be to God. Where's that word? In your mouth. We read in Joshua. We did it. We're doing this in the Old Testament. He said, let not this word depart out of your mouth. See, he's telling you, Jesus, look, church, the word is nigh you. Your healing is already nigh you. It's in your mouth. But you're going to have to open your mouth and say it. Watch. He says that if the... Uh, 
That is the word of faith. The word is not you, even in your mouth and in your heart. A lot of times you say it with your mouth or you believe it in your heart, but you won't say it with your mouth. Or you, you believe it in your heart or you say it with your mouth, but you don't believe it with your heart. You got to get them both connected together. Oh, I got even in thy mouth, what, what, but what, but what saith it? The word is near you. That's what that word nigh is. The word is near you. Where is it at? In your mouth and in your heart. What is that? That is the word of faith which we preach. See, that's what we preach. The word of faith. It's a law. It's a universe. It's a spiritual law. What is the word of faith? See, you can speak against it, talk against it, but I tell you what, if you don't learn it, it ain't going to work for you. You're going to be praying and hoping it's God's will to heal you until you die and go to heaven. And you're going to say, Lord, why didn't you heal me? He said, I already did. But why didn't you heal me? Because you wouldn't receive it. You wouldn't speak it out of your mouth and you wouldn't believe it in your heart. You kept wanting me to come and do something. I already did. But how do I get it? You speak it out of your mouth and it's in your heart. The word is already near your mouth. And then he says this, that if you what? That if you confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus is healing the Lord Jesus. Jesus is the word. You confess with your mouth, healing. I confess with my mouth, healing. And you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shall be saved. See, if you confess that word that you heal, you will be saved. You won't be sick for long. But you got to confess it with your mouth. And you got to believe it in your heart. That's a universal law. That's a spiritual law. That's a kingdom law. I ain't talking about the world. Because the world say, I won't believe until I see it. Now nah, you will know it then. The way the kingdom of God works, you believe it first, then you have it. See, you don't get saved until you say it with your mouth and believe it in your heart. And then guess what happened? Now you being saved, did that come first? No, you have to say it with your mouth and believe in your heart. Then you say it. All right. So are you saved after or before? See, do you have, okay, let me say it like this. Do you have to say it and believe it before you be saved or after you say it? Before. That's the answer. I go told you the answer to the test. Before. So how are you going to receive your healing? You're going to have to believe it with your mouth. See, you're going to have to say it with your mouth and believe it in your heart. And then you have the healing. That's just the way it works. That's the way it works. That's the way the kingdom works. That's the way it works. I'm telling you, that's the law. That's the way it works. That's the way God operates. That's the way you operate. See, God calls you a champion when you don't even think you're a champion. God calls you heal even before you see healing. God calls you more than a conqueror even before you conquer. How many of you all see this? I'm trying my best, Lord, to give it to you the best I can. And that's why Jesus did what he did. Let's go back over to Matthew chapter 8 and verse 16 and 17. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Woo, glory be to God. I'm glad I came to healing school. Okay, let's look at it in the Amplified again, in the Amplified Classic. Matthew uh, 8, 16, 17 says, When evening came, they brought to him many who were under the power of demons, and he drove out the spirits with a word and restored to health all who were sick. How many did he restore back to health? All of them. Do you need to be restored to back to health? Then believe it. Say it with your mouth and believe it in your heart. And then it says, and thus he fulfilled what was spoken by the prophets Isaiah. He himself took in order to carry away. See, he took, oh, this is so good. I love how this says it. He took in order to carry away our weaknesses and infirmities and bore away our diseases. That's why it's said over there in Romans, don't say, don't say Jesus come back or Jesus. He already did it. Why did he do it? He did it in order to carry away our weaknesses and infirmities and bore away our diseases. If God already did it, why are you asking him to do it again? It's up to you to receive what he's already done. How many of you see that? He's already done it. So what do I do? 
See, this is what, remember I said this years, I said this not just years ago, but I continue to say every now and then. See, many people mentally, they mentally ascend to the word of God. See, they mentally, I, I believe that. But this is what I got to get you to get, this is where I've got to take you to. But do you believe it's for you? So I, I got to get you past mentally agreeing with this to receiving it in your heart. Oh, I, I mentally believe Jesus can heal. I know Jesus will to heal, but do you believe he wants to heal you? And the reason some of us struggle with that, because we don't see the love of God wanting to heal me. You see, when you see the picture of how much God loves you, when you meditate on how much God loves you, Jesus died on that cross because he loves you. See, you believe that for your salvation, but you believe that he also took them whippings on his back and went through all them stripes because he wanted you to be healed. See, you got to see that. Jesus, you did this so I could be healed. You wanted me to be healed. You already knew the devil was going to try, the devil was going to put this disease on me, but you already paid the price. I receive that healing, Father. I receive that healing, Lord. Thank you for healing me, Jesus. Come on, church. You see this? Lord, thank you for, for, thank you for healing me. I receive this healing. I receive this healing. Now, why is, it con why is it important to continue to hear anointed teaching? You see how the Spirit of God, through me teaching, your faith is rising up, and you grabbing a hold of it, and you believing it? Now, as soon as we turn off, as soon as you let this go, the enemy going to come, and he's going to say this. Now, you know that ain't for you. Come, he comes immediately. But the, you keep hearing that from me and other teachers that teach you on healing and teach you that it's God's will for you to be healed. Man, your faith rise up. You go, oh, yeah, Lord, yeah, yeah. See, not your head, but your spirit, man, loves it. See, a spirit food. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, I believe it. That's why you read. See, don't even read books that don't feed your faith. If it ain't feeding your faith, don't read it. Why, why are you going to read a bunch of stuff that's unbelief? See, people, people, one time, I remember people gave me, give me books and they will give me a testimony of somebody, how they are strong Christians, but they still crippled and stuff. I, look, I'm not mad at nobody, but I, I want to read my faith on the same way. God wants me to be healed. That's his will. I, I'm sorry to that person in that situation. I'm not mad at them, but maybe they've never been taught or they know that it's God's will for them to be healed. I'm not mad at nobody. I mean, come on. I'm trying to get everybody healed. Oh, I don't know about that. That's okay. Stick around. You'll start believing it. <laughs> you'll start believing it. Just keep sticking around. You listen to it long enough. You believe it long enough. And plus, if you read this Bible, your faith will grow up. And you say, I believe that's for me. And once you believe, see, once you can see that God loves his love, not me, the love of God, the love of God did it just for you. Man, your faith will rise up. Your faith will rise up when you believe that God loves you enough. See, not me, but that God loves you enough that he wants you well. It's no different than you want your children well or your grandchildren well if you got children. It's no different. Or you have a parent. And I don't know how many of you might have a parent that's sick. It's no different than your love wanting your family member to be healed. I don't know, some kind of uh, terminal illness is no different. So how much more do you think the Father loves you? How about you? See, I'm talking, let's just talk about you. Do you believe God loves you enough that he wants to heal you? Because that's, that's where the blockage is. And the devil will come lying to you. But you got to get to that point where you know, the Father loves me. And no matter what I did or do, what I, no matter what I did or I'm going to do, he loves me so much that he wants to heal me. Just like he wanted to save you. He's saying that's the same God who wants to heal you. Amen. Okay, we're going to stop right there. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to stop. I believe the Spirit of the Lord telling me to stop. We got a little more time, but we're going to pray. I believe the Lord said pray and just release, release healing, release it. See, the anointing of God in me is released to you. You just receive it. When I pray, don't just, okay, no, just receive it. I'm, I'm going to take and release that, that anointing because it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. God gave us the authority, so I'm going to release it, and you grab that anointing and let God heal you. Amen. Okay, I'm going to stop this so it don't buzz in the middle of our prayer. All right. So, Father, right now in Jesus' name, I don't know who's watching. You know who's watching. You know what they're going through, Father. And you know those who are going to watch us later. But, Father, right now in Jesus' name, glory be to God. In Jesus' name, in Je I release. Hallelujah. I release the healing power of God. And I say be healed. 
we heal, we be healed. I release that love of God. That's what it is. Healing is just the love of God. I release that love of God. Yeah, I release it. I release it. I come against you. Yeah, yeah, that that heart, uh, what is that? That heart uh fluttering. I, I I come against that. I command that heart to beat with the rhythm of God in Jesus' name. I say, be healed. Oh, glory. Yeah, be healed. I come against cancer. Right now, in the name of Jesus, cancer, I speak to you. I take authority over you. I command you to shrivel up and die. Shrivel up and die. Stop spreading. I say, go. Loose them and let them go. I say, be I release healing. I release the healing. I release the healing. Yeah, receive it. Just receive the love. That, oh, glory. That's it. Just receive that love. Receive that love. Muscle deterioration. Muscle disease. I come against you right now in Jesus' name. I command you to cease your maneuver. I command you to loose them. Let them go. Be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I come against arthritis in the name of Jesus. I come against you. I say, go. I release healing. I command your joints to be healed. Yes, right now. Oh, glory. Right now in Jesus' name. That's right. Just receive it. I release that healing. Just, just receive that love of God. The love of God. The love of God. Receive it right now. I come against migraine headaches right now in Jesus' name. That's right. Just receive it. What? What? Just receive it. Believe that God loves you enough that he don't want you to be in pain no more. Take it. Take it. Take it. Receive it. I come against their migraine headaches right now. I say be gone in Jesus' name. I come against bone spurs right now in the name of Jesus. I come against ringing in the ear in the cease in Jesus' name. I command that ring in the cease. Ears open. Ears open. Ears. And, oh, glory. Just receive it. Yes. Yes. I, boy, I, I can sense like Jesus when he said, I felt virtue go out. I can. Oh, I can sense it. I can feel that virtue leaving. Yeah. Just receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it in Jesus' name. Back pain. Back pain. De deteriorating discs. I command you to be healed. Be healed. Yep, 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 receive it. No, no, come on, receive it. It's coming back to me. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. I release that healing now in your back. Flow the love of God. Oh, glory. There it is. Receive it. The love of God. The love of God. The love of God. Receive it right now. Oh, glory. There it is right now in Jesus' name. Just receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Somebody having a problem in this joint. I mean, in this jaw. In there's joy. I don't know if it's a, uh, if, if you fractured it or something happened, an accident, but Jesus wants to heal you. I, oh, yeah. I command that joint, that, that joy, that joy. Line up. Line up. Yeah. Woo. Glory. Yeah. I know, I know. That's some good stuff. Line up. Line up. I command that joy to line up with the word of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. In Jesus' name. Somebody having, having, having a uh, soreness like in, uh, up on your muscles. I don't know what it is in your in your arm and your elbows. Not it's not that carb or tiner, but something else is going on in there. And I release the healing power of God. I release the healing power of God in your body right now. Just receive it. The love of God. That's what I keep hearing tonight. The love. Just receive the love of God. Let Him love on you. 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 Receive that love of God. Right now in Jesus' name. Now, right now in Jesus' name, I come against every sickness, every sickness, every disease germ, every virus, every pain. I say, go. Somebody, your left thumb, I'm telling you, I can, I can sense the tingling flowing up in my hand. Your left thumb. I don't know if you dislocated or what, but you're being healed right now in Jesus' name. Go ahead. You start moving. I, I, I can sense it. You're being healed right now. In Jesus' name. And oh yeah, in Jesus' name. Kidneys. Kidneys. I release new kidneys right now. Receive it. Yeah, yep. God, God, yeah, he'll do that. Somebody said, Will God do that? Yes, he will. You receive that new kidney right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I release that kidney to you. Receive it by faith. In Jesus' name. Yeah, you shall live. I don't know who you are. You shall. You said, Lord, I want to live. You shall live and you shall not die. And you shall declare the work of the Lord. That's right. Yes, you. That, uh, it's a lady. I see you laying there. You saying, Lord, I want to live. You shall live. You shall live. You shall live and not die. And you shall declare the works of the Lord. Yes, you receive it. Receive it. 
receive it. Just receive it. Yep, that's all it is. Just receive it. Say, I receive it, Father. Say, I receive it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, right now in Jesus' name, I just release healing. Glory be to God. I release your healing throughout this service due to your people. Those are watching, those that are watching later, I release it. I release it. I release it. Now you receive it. Receive it by faith. Say, Lord, I receive it. There you go. Say, Lord, I receive that healing. I receive it. I receive your love. I receive your love. Lord, and yet your love, your love, your love. I receive your love in Jesus' name. Glory. Ooh, glory be to God in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you for loving on your people, Father. Thank you for loving on your people. Thank you, Father, for loving on your people. Father, we release that healing to flow in their bodies right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Ooh, we serve a good God, church. I'm here to tell you, we serve a good God, loving God. He wants every one of you healed. Glory, hallelujah. And when you see, when you begin to see it, you begin to see it, you believe it, it's yours. But you're gonna have to confess it with your mouth. Believe it in your heart. What? I'm healed now. Lord, I, I, I say I'm healed now. Why? Because what you see is temporary. It's subject to, I say I'm healed now. I'm here now in Jesus' name. All right, well, look, y'all be blessed. Have a great week. Uh, now, this Sunday, we're just going to be streaming for church. We're just going to be streaming uh, for church. I have a special message. I believe the Lord will come back uh, the following week. I believe the Lord giving me a message because uh, fear, fear about like the end times, fear is coming. And I believe the Lord placed play a message in my heart. I, said, I just want you to share it, to get fear, get fear out of people. Fear is fear is a force opposite of faith. But God said, just share it to them. Share them about the end time. Let them know what time we're living in. And I, I just believe the Lord laid on my heart. I'm going to share that with you. I don't know how long, how short it'll be, but we'll we have it. You during the stream, you pick it up at 10, 10, 10, 10 30 Pacific time, 1 30 for y'all on the East Coast. But watch it. If you don't get a chance to watch, I believe it'll encourage you. It's going to comfort you because it's the word of God. Amen. All right. Well, y'all be blessed. And uh, next week, we'll do healing school because I won't be here, but we're going to put a different one. Maybe we'll do this one. We'll put another one up for you to see again. Amen. But y'all remember this. Amen. That God is exalted. Glory be to God. Satan, that no good low down sap sucker, he is defeated. And Jesus is Lord. P-O-H. Peace out, homies and homieettes. We'll see y'all next time. God bless you for now. Bye.